Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Carpenter and we're going to be reading some more of I Survived the Eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. And we left off where we're at the beginning of chapter 8. The year was 1902 on the Caribbean island of Martinique, Dr. Morales began. The island's capital is the city of St. Pierre, which is right on the Caribbean Sea. And it sits right at the base of Mount Pelée. Pelé was a fairy tale kind of mountain with bright green slopes covered with trees, like, Main, like Mount St. Helens just thought. Few people realized that it was actually a volcano. It had rumbled a few times over the centuries, but it had been silent for more than 50 years. And then in April of 1902, Pelé woke up. All through the month, there were hundreds of very small earthquakes. Like the ones today, Eddie asked. Dr. Morales nodded. There was also the strange smell of sulfur gas seeping from deep inside the earth. That gas builds up in a volcano. It's becoming more uh, active and it can leak out of the earth. It has a horrific smell like rotten eggs. Around Pelé, the stench became so strong that people fainted in the streets. Horses collapsed. But few had any idea that the quakes and the sulfur were the warning signs that Pelé was going to erupt. The science of volcanoes was unknown back then. People simply didn't understand that they were in danger. They ch that changed in early, of, uh, early May when a small eruption sent ash and glowing rocks into the air. A few days later, part of the volcano broke away and a river of boiling mud and ash roared down the mountain at 80 miles an hour. That's faster than my truck, Mr. Rowan said. Some mudslides can travel even faster. That one killed more than 150 people, Dr. Morales said. He looked at Jess and the twins. The story gets more grisly. Maybe I should stop here. No, Sam shouted. For him, this was even better than the, a Mariners game. Dr. Morales looked at Mom, who nodded. Okay, because next come the snakes. Snakes, Mom said. The earthquake disturbed thousands of snakes that had been living on the mountain. They came slithering down into St. Pierre. Some of them were venomous six-foot-long pit vipers. Hundreds of people died from bites. Goodness, I'm going to have nightmares about this, Mom said. Sorry, Dr. Morales said. I, I'm getting carried away. I probably should stop. But no way Sam would let him. It's all right, Mom said. You might as well tell us how it ends. I think we can take it, Mr. Rowan agreed. So at this point, people were terrified, as you can imagine. Many people left by ship, but most couldn't afford to flee or had a place to go. And the leaders of St. Pierre kept telling people that the worst was over. I'm guessing they were wrong, Mom said with a cringe. Very wrong, Dr. Morales answered. The real disaster happened on May the 8th. A cloud of sulfur blanketed the city. First, there was a massive explosion. Pumice and mud rained down, and then a wave of searing hot gas and ash exploded out of the mountain and into St. Pierre. Dr. Morales took a breath. Within seconds, 30,000 people were dead. Jess gasped, and the boy's chins practically hit the table. 30,000 people, Mom said slowly. slowly. How is that even possible? That was the pyroclastic surge. Imagine the wind in a hurricane, but with air that's scalding hot. Then add toxic gas and ground up rock and ash. The heat is so extreme that it burns everything in its path. People died instantly without even knowing what had happened to them. Nobody spoke for a moment, and even Sam looked a little queasy. The only sound was the gurgle of the soda fountain. And you're saying that the same thing could happen here, Mom asked. Dr. Morales nodded. It could, but luckily there aren't uh, 30,000 people living right at the base of Mount St. Helens. That was true. The mountain was surrounded by forests with just a few towns dotting the valley. A chill came over Jess, even though she was warm and snug sitting between the uh, twins. For her entire life, uh, St. Helens had been the beautiful mountain rising in the sky. She'd grown up hiking its windy trails, uh, diving into the cold lakes and fishing for trout in its streams. Just looking at St. Helens out her window made her feel calm, as if it were watching over her somehow. 
okay, maybe somewhere in the back of her mind she'd known that St. Helens was a volcano. Everyone around here knew that, but just never imagined that it was a real volcano, a killer one that could explode. When do you think this eruption is going to happen, Mom asked. Dr. Malice shook his head. It's hard to say for sure, but I do believe it's going to erupt violently, and I think it's going to happen soon. Chapter 9 Jess couldn't sleep. Every time she closed her eyes, she imagined St. Helens exploding and then a flaming wind sweeping down the mountain. Finally, she took her quilt and went into Mom's room. Mom was awake, too, and moved over in the bed to make room for Jess. Don't be worried, Mom said. You heard what Dr. Morales said. We're safe here in Cedar. I know. I just can't help thinking about it. I can't either, Mom said, but I think we need to put it out of our minds. Maybe Dr. Morales has just watched too many disaster movies. Just now, that part about the snakes was a bit much. Mom giggled a little. But do you really think St. Helens is going to erupt? Could that actually happen? Mom turned toward Jess. She moved closer so that their noses were almost touching. Whatever happens, you and I will make it through, like we always have, and like we always will. Mom said the words without a shred of doubt. Jess looked at Mom. She still needed to tell her about the camera. But suddenly, Jess was so tired, she closed her eyes, and with Mom's calming words whispering through her mind, Jess fell asleep. The next morning, Jess and Mom had barely finished breakfast when the twins came barging through the door. We're in the newspaper, Sam cried. You are? Jess said with surprise. Not us, Eddie cried. St. Helens. They held up the Seattle paper with a headline screaming out from the front page, Mount St. Helens awakes. Jess couldn't believe that their mountain was on the front page of an important newspaper like the Times. At school that day, their teacher, Mr. Daly, canceled their fractions quiz. Instead, he gave them a lesson about volcanoes. He explained that the earth was like a big ball of candy with different layers. The outer shell was the crust, and it was about 18 miles thick. Underneath was an ocean of fiery molten rock. In some spots, there were cracks in the crust, and that's where the volcanoes formed. Jess was shocked to learn that there were 1,500 volcanoes around the world that could be active, and 14 of them were right in the Cascades. How did she not know any of this? None of the kids in the class knew. On the blacktop that day, nobody wanted to play kickball. They all nervously eyed the mountain, which rose up in the distance. Kids gathered around Sam as Sam repeated Dr. Morales' story of Mount Pelé. He explained about the warning signs, the rotten egg stench of sulfur gas, the mudslides, and, of course, the pit vipers. He told them about the fiery hurricane wind that swept down the mountain. The kids listened with wide eyes and slack jaws. This story was way better than the legend of Skeleton Woman. On Tuesday, Missy saw a garter snake slithering through the grass behind the blacktop. It's a pit viper, she shrieked. Other kids freaked out, too. It took Mr. Daly the rest of recess to calm them down and to convince them that there were no pit vipers in Washington State or anywhere in the United States. Over the next few days, the police set up roadblocks on Spirit Lake Memorial Highway They wouldn't let anyone within 10 miles of the mountain, not even loggers. The whole town seemed to be holding its breath, waiting for something to happen. And then on Friday, something did. It was near the end of school day, and Jess was gathering her notebooks for dismissal. Suddenly, a loud boom rattled their desk and sent Mr. Daly's coffee mug crashing to the floor. Twenty-one heads turned and stared out the window. They had a perfect view of St. Helens rising up over the ridge. It didn't look peaceful anymore. Pale gray smoke was gushing out of the top. It's erupting, Sam cried. And we'll find out more tomorrow.